Welcome to Art One Back to School Night. Totally. I'm, I'm Dave Beal. And I'm Jones. And we are your kids, Art One teachers. You have one or the other of us. We're um, about to switch you over to a slideshow. And our students are coming in our classroom as we're speaking. It's totally lunchtime. Um, okay, let's go to the slideshow. Okay, we're going to share the screen. Yeah and get going in the slideshow so here's the slideshow so here we go okay why is he doing that oh my god we're legit okay <laughs> <laughs> so um normally you would be in our classrooms and we'd be walking you through this but today we're going to walk you through a uh, virtual version of that um our whole program is built on the elements of art line shape form space color and texture and your kids can probably tell you that by now because we've already started um, putting these items in our sketchbook a metaphor i like to use is the elements are like when you're making a cake the elements are like the ingredients and all the different cakes that you can make with those ingredients are the principles so I use that metaphor a lot with my students. Um, so uh, this is an example of what you will see on your kids' Google Classroom if you care to visit it. Um, we try to make each assignment have sort of a, a visual interesting um, component Element. to it, mm -hmm. as, long, as well as a bunch of different resources embedded in there. So if you take a look at the expectations, you can see there are different videos that explain space to your kid. Um, there are a couple different um, mediums that they can explore. And then at the bottom is a demonstration video that um, Jones and I take turns. She, this is her wheelhouse, so she does a lot more of the tutorials. I do more of the design of this um, type of uh, presentation so they can um, explore it. And what we suggest is after they're done with each project, that they go through those instructions to make sure they've hit all the expectations of our class. I have a YouTube channel. I have 21 subscribers. So she's, she's kind of a big deal. It's a triple threat. Um, so okay. these are some student examples of their sketchbooks, which are their textbooks. They fill these in. So this is um, their example of line, shape, form we're going through these kind of quickly because they're all basically the same format they're Again, reference pages these, inside the sketchbook ooh, that one's really nice that i don't that that's your student that yeah good. um color and texture so once they complete that they have all their ingredients as miss jones said to to bake their cake so this will take up the first grading period just hitting the foundation pieces um, and then each of these has a connected smaller project so they can learn about those elements and then apply those elements. I'll let you talk about this. Uh, one of the things that we teach after we learn the elements of principles, we get into the like design and how it works. We don't go right into observational drawing right away. We start with design. So we teach the students how to look at a square and how to utilize a square with the elements of design. One of those things we use is, is a, an assignment called a contour abstraction where we have all these criteria and it kind of teaches the kids how to follow criteria visually. So it's like touches three sides, overlaps, changes scales, the, the lines wrap and create dimension. So, and then we, from there we build, after they learn the elements of design, then we build onto that. So we get them really strong in design first. Um, we do some projects that are kind of touch all levels. So we are dealing with ninth graders with no experience all the way to seniors that may have some art experience. So that's the cool thing about Art One. It's probably your kids only time to interact with kids of different grade levels, different um, like cognitive levels. Um, so we try to make the projects approachable to all levels. So they're not all serious academic art projects. This is a super fun one that we just based off, off comic books. Um, but it teaches them again, design and color and line. Com comic line. Yeah. So and it's, expression, like it's like it's just yeah, expressive. I don't know, something like that. So we also do, as Melissa said, observational drawing. If if your child pursues um, the next level of art, um, Miss Jones teaches art two, art three, and AP art. Um, that's for someone who is considering a career a career in visual arts. Um, 
we try to prepare them for the next level when you're teaching, when she's teaching them in art too. So we do teach value, which is, you know, the gradation of light and dark, but we also teach them how to look at light and shadows. So that creates form. So we teach that that's, those are elements and principles, the value, the form, like the triangle or the pyramid turning into the pyramid, I'm sorry, a triangle turning into a pyramid. Those are all things that we're teaching. And so this is a great example the basic forms we teach like how to do a sphere and then we talk about all the d definitions of how light hits a sphere and all the different types of light so it's something that we do it is a beginning thing to learn so um so we also try to do mixed media pieces so this is one example of pencil like graphite pencil color pencil and watercolor um and again teaching them compositional skills um we touched on some of these things earlier ops um observational but also like they choose what this composition looks like which, and we i mean we all if you're if you were a teacher and you had to teach 36 kids how to fold an origami crane all at once it's very exciting i tell you <laughs> exciting <good word. laughs> but yeah they fold their own prop and the the prop is white so that how they can see uh, the values okay some some of the drawings have values and some are in line so it, it just depends on the year i suppose doesn't it yeah year to year um and then we kind of go through all of those elements we talked about earlier we spend quite a bit of time on color theory so they learn not just like what a color is but how it's used in by different artists in creates different effects um different emotions um, but we always build on the foundation. So they'll have to learn how to build their own color wheel. And yeah. each, each student has their own freedom within that project. And the color wheel is, it is a scientific study of color. So it isn't just, I like the color wheel because it's in a color. So, you know, there's all these relationships within the circle. There's complementary colors, there's analogous colors, there's split complementary, there's triadic. So it's like, all of these different color that it, it needs to be in the wheel to learn these scientific color theory. So that is why we start with the wheel. And then from there we get into like, how do they, how does the wheel work together? You know, so that's what we do. And then here's color harmony. Mm. Yeah, we spend quite a bit of time on color harmony and using watercolor and acrylic paints. It's so nice to have them back now because we weren't really able to get acrylic paint out there to them. And so we like, them having that sort of tactile experience mm -hmm. of exploring that. Um, the final two things we do are perspective. So they start with sort of a simple one point perspective. Um, and the kids love this project because it's it's open to, you know, like whatever way you want to do it, but it's built on a very structured academic principle. Yeah, one point perspective is and and one and two point perspective or something that we teach, you know, and that that was invented in the Renaissance. So, you know, I don't know if Beale's doing that, but par parallel with per perspective drawing is learning about the Renaissance because all of those things happened at, and, and perspective completely shifted the art world and how we see space correctly in, in images. That's all from one point perspective, which was invented in the Renaissance. So. So this is an example of taking those principles, learning about them, and then applying them. So they're supposed to create their perfect uh, living space. If they were to create, live anywhere, what would that look like? So they have their own individual freedom once they learn how to apply those principles. Um, and then our final two-dimensional project is learning portraiture, which brings, again, all those things back, line, value, the texture, all those things. Um, they do either a self-portrait or a portrait of, these are self-portraits of por portraits of someone they choose. Um, and again, there's all levels, they yeah, attack it talk. differently. Yeah, I just wanna talk briefly about if we go back a little, wait, back, how do I go back? These are art twos and I do wanted to touch base. These are art ones and you can tell the refinement of light and shadow and how as you learn and grow as an artist, you, you're, it's, you know, these are very simple, uh, simple way of defining the light and shadow, almost two tone or three tone. And then you get into the advanced levels and they're getting much more into the texture and just more detail. So, you know, art one, there's, this is absolutely necessary step. And I think these portraits have actually like quite a lot of character. I mean, they're very sweet and they have like this natural abstraction just because they're it's their first portrait ever, but there is something really beautiful about them. So I just wanted to talk about that. Yeah. 
And our last project is some form of three-dimensional uh, exploration. Um, that's usually in the spring. So a lot of this is done outside. Um, we did a thing with books the last year. So we still have this here and we'll see what we, what we find the kids are ready for. Um, but that is art one in a nutshell. Yeah, that's our curriculum. If you have questions, email us. Um, we'll have some open Zoom time attached to this, but that is our intro to um, art one. See you later. Stop recording. <laughs>